Hey everybody, it's Karen with Food and Family. I'm getting ready to start supper for my husband. He's at work today and I want to have a good meal when he gets home. We're going to have um, cubed steak with gravy. I'm going to make some potato patties that he dearly loves and I'm going to cook some black eyed peas and I'm going to float some little whole okra on top and he loves those. But first, we're going to start with dessert and I'm going to be making a peach crisp today. Now, I've got my oven preheating to 350. I'm going to use my baking dish and I'm going to butter it. So what I do is a good idea if you have, you know, your butter, once you open it, there's butter left on that packet. Use it to um, grease your pan. Oh, I'm sorry, that's so noisy. Um, grease, use it to grease your pan. It does a beautiful job and you use what's left on the paper, on the wrapping. So, looky there. Now see how well that buttered that? And that was just the basically residue off of that butter wrapper. Okay, so I'm gonna set it right here. Now, I have got a 29 ounce can of sliced peaches. And I like sliced, you can use frozen. If you want, you would need to cut them, cook them down a little bit so you can get some really good juice. You don't want this to dry. I don't, anyway, I want a little juice in it. And um, I like frozen and I like canned. Um, if you wanna go all the way, you can use fresh, cook them down. But I like doing this. Okay, so let's pour it all in there. So, with, my hands are clean. You didn't get to see me wash them, but I promise you I do. So I emptied it all in there. This is a, I think a nine by nine baking dish. No, nope, I'm sorry, it's an eight by eight baking dish. And so let's set that aside for a moment. Oh, first I want to sprinkle a little bit of white granulated sugar over those peaches, okay? Just a light sprinkle. Give them a little sweetness. They're not really sweet when they come out of the can. If you don't want the extra sugar, the extra sweetness, you don't have to. Now, that was probably a couple of tablespoons at the most. Okay, so now for our topping, I'm going to use half a cup of self-rising flour. Now, if you want to use all-purpose flour, you can, but you'll need to add some uh, baking powder and baking soda. And I'm going to use a half a cup of some quick cooking oats. Just some quick cooking oats to go in. And I'm going to use half a cup of brown sugar. Now, when you use brown sugar, you know you have to pack it, okay? Man, I'm getting low. I think I have a half a cup in there. Let me just spoon it out and we'll see. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have plenty in there. So let's just take your hands and just gently pack it down. And that's it. Dump it in. And we're going to use, let's just use a fork to combine this. Can you see it? Just get it mixed up, get the flour and the brown sugar distributed evenly among those oats. You don't want flour in one spot and all sugar in another. You want it mixed together. That's what makes it good. If there's any lumps in your sugar, kind of use the, your fork and just kind of gently smash it down. Okay, now I've got some butter I melted in the microwave. 
half a stick of butter. It still has a little bit. It's not totally melted, but it'll be okay. It's going to melt all the way. All I want to do is mix this um, flour and sugar oatmeal together. Now, if you want, I'm not. I'm leaving them out, but you can add pecans, a few pecans, chopped pecans. I would go, and not too fine. You don't want dust, but I would go a little finer in it. And um, so I'm not supposed to eat pecans. I'm not allergic to them. It's a tummy issue. But um, every now and then I sneak and have some, but I don't do it often. So just take your fork or spoon, whatever you're using, and just kind of stir that around. It'll get all wet and it'll kind of get a little bit clumpy. I'll show you. So it just gets a little clumpy, and but that's good. That's what you want. So now what we're gonna do with my clean hands, I'm just gonna sprinkle this all on top of the peaches. Try to get it as even as I can. There we go. And then we're gonna bake this. I've got my oven preheated to 350. I think I've already told you that. And um, we're going to bake this uh, 35, 45 minutes. We want it to be crispy and um, bubbly. So we'll keep an eye on it. And then we'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. Let's get this in the oven. I've got it a little right. And set our timer. I'm going to set the timer for 35 minutes, and then I'll check it. I'll check it after that, and if it needs to go a little longer, I'll put it on a little longer. Okay, so let me get this mess cleaned up, and I'm going to get started on my, the rest of my supper is going to be peas I'm going to put on next. So hang with me, okay? I'll be right back. All right, we're back, and the timer is going off on our peach crisp. So let's get it out of the oven and check on it, okay? Oh, it smells so good. And I know it's going to be good. Oh, man. I'm going to shut this oven door, and I'm going to show this to you. Mmm. Looky here. See it bub can you see it bubbling? And it's still juicy and it's got all that topping on there. Mmm. I'm gonna sit it up here on a rack to let it cool. And then when I get ready to serve it, we can serve it with some whipped cream, we can serve it with some ice cream, or just the way it is. It's going how we want it when it happens, okay? Alright, so let me get prepared and get started on our next dish, okay? Let's get some peas going. They take longer than the other stuff we're going to cook. So I've got a bag of frozen black-eyed peas. And I'm sorry, purple hole peas. Let's keep saying black-eyed peas. Purple hole peas. Pour them in our pan, our boiler. There's two of us, so I don't need... A lot. A bag like this will make, I don't know, three or four meals for me and him. This is a 36 ounce bag, and uh, that's all we need. I'm going to get some water. Just cover them with water. That's all you need. You don't have to drown them. See, I just covered them enough. You go down. Come up to the first joint on your finger, okay? And that's what I do. I'm gonna put some salt in it. You gotta salt them, they don't come seasoned. So, a little bit of salt to your taste. Now, what I like to do, you can use bacon. You can use any kind of um, seasoning you want if you've got ham. You can throw that in there, bacon. I'm gonna use butter though, that's my go-to. And I'm gonna put about three tablespoons of butter 
in this pot. So, it's going to be good. So, let's get this on the stove. Now, I'm going to cover it just to get it come up to temperature, get it to boil it, and then I'll turn it down and it'll go a little slower and a little lower. But um, it takes maybe an hour to cook them. Peas is something that cooks really quick. They're a good protein and they're delicious, you know. So we're going to have our other things to go with it. I may make a pan of cornbread and that's going to be supper. I don't know what more we can ask for. So give me a minute. I'm going to come back and we're going to get some other stuff going, okay? Now, let's get started on our cute steak. So I've got some flour already measured out and a pie plate, and I'm going to bake two eggs in this other pie plate. And uh, we're gonna, when I say double dip, we're going to put our steak in the flour, then we're gonna put it in the beaten egg, and then we're going to put it back in the flour. Let me get a little bit of water in here, I won't just a touch of water and we're going to get these eggs beaten up now we're going to be seasoning these cube steaks and i'm going to put a little seasoning in my flour too i'm going to put a little bit of um i'm sorry salt and pepper in the eggs and i'm going to do the same in my flour now i'm going to cut back on my salt on the flour because I'm using a garlic salt and parsley. I got these at one of the little discount stores and uh, I hadn't tried it and I thought, well, that would be good. So I'm just going to shake what I think I want in there, which is, I think, about a teaspoon. And that should be good right there. So, um, then I want a little bit of paprika. I love adding the paprika. And it gives it color. It gives it a little flavor. That's about a teaspoon. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper, dried cayenne pepper, but not much. We don't like it hot, but I'm going to put in just enough that you're going to know you got something in there, but it's not going to set your mouth on fire. I don't do hot so well. Okay, so there we go. Now, we're going to stir that up with, I thought I had a um, bit of a with my big fork here. We're gonna stir the flour and all those seasonings up. And you know, the paprika and the red pepper is gonna change the color just a little bit of the flour, but you just, just enough to know I got something in there. Okay. We didn't have salt a lot in there. We put a tiny bit in the eggs, but I'm also going to put a little bit on the meat. So you want to watch how much you use. So I've got just a small pack of cubed steak. There's two of us, so there's no reason for me. One hand, because I don't want to cross contaminate, I'm going to spread these apart and Using my other hand, I'm going to dip in my salt and pepper, and that way I'm not cross-contaminating. Just I'm just going to lightly salt and pepper it, okay? And I think I'm just going to do one side. Now, let's get our oil going. You want it on like a medium to medium low. This is something that cooks fairly quickly. And we're also going to take, after I take them up, get it browned real good on both sides, we're going to make a gravy. 
And once we get that gravy, we're gonna slip these back into that gravy and it's gonna simmer some more in that gravy. So, oh, it's gonna be so good. I can't wait to eat and I know my husband's gonna want it and he works hard every day and he deserves this good meal. So, let's get this oil going, turn it up. I should have already had it on. Oh yeah, it's getting done. It's getting hot now. Put a little flour, pinch of flour in there and you'll know when it gets hot enough. It's not hot enough yet to put our meat in, in there. If I did, it would just soak up the oil and it, it's not gonna fry up and be tasty. But we can go ahead and be flouring these. And we're just gonna flour them and set them aside. Flour, dip in the egg. And my hands are gonna get messy, but that's okay. You know you're cooking in the egg and back in the flour. Press that flour in good because you want a good crust on it. Once we get it in the pan, we're not gonna mess with it too much because we don't want to lose that good crust on it. So let's set it right here and we'll do the next one. Okay, so look at here, we got all of this. You see, it didn't take long and it's coated really good. Look at there, now that oil is almost there, almost. So give me a second and I'm gonna go wash my hands Frying. I'm using my pigtail. Well, you've seen me use it a lot if you've watched me. It doesn't tear up your meat and it doesn't it doesn't take the breading off like tongs will, but it also won't um, let out the juices. Just that little prick of that will not let the juices escape. I want to put a little bit of onion in the gravy. And um, I'm just gonna put, oh, maybe half of this onion and just slice it up in rings. And when we take this meat up, we'll just let it um, cook down a little bit. Just just enough to get soft. We don't want to cook it away. And, um, let's see, I think I'm going to cut it this way instead. And we just want to get it a little soft, and it's just going to add more flavor into this meal. Watch fingers, really sharp knife. You see how I cut it? They're not thick, and they're just going to simmer away for just a minute in that oil after we take them up. So, let me let you go and I'll be back in a minute when I get ready to flip these. All right, this meat is ready to flip over to the other side. It's been cooking on this side about, I don't know, four minutes or so and um, so I'm gonna flip it. it you hear hey, it's quieting down quite a bit in the sizzle, and you'll know it's ready to flip. Look at that color on there. And we're gonna put it over, flip the other on, flip it. Mm. How pretty. If y'all could just see and smell how pretty that is. Don't worry about that. We're going to flip it back over again. So, but what I want to do, I think I want to go ahead and sprinkle my onions in and around. And they can get started with cooking. So, and I know it's also the meat, but I'm going to put just a tiny bit of salt across these onions and a little bit of pepper. I like coarse ground black pepper. And uh, I'll use fresh ground black pepper, but that is just convenient right there. 
and um, get these onions down in there. And they'll be cooking while the meat's cooking. Then we can get it all out, get our gravy made, get that back in there, and we're on to the next dish. Now I want you to look at the second side, and it doesn't take quite as long to cook on that second side. And we're just going to hit that side there for another second. Then we're going to get all of these out of the pan, and we're going to make our gravy. So, but looky there, how pretty is that? Mm. I'm just sitting it aside on this plate, and I'm going to take the onions out. I don't want them to cook anymore in that oil. They're just where I want them. Some of them are a little brown, some of them aren't. That's just added flavor. Got a little crispy down there in the bottom. That's okay. So, let's set this aside for the moment and get the gravy started. And I think I have very little oil left in my pan. I didn't use much to begin with. It doesn't take a lot of oil. We're not deep frying. So, I'm going to put just a little bit more oil in there, and then I'm going to sprinkle. This is the flour we had left from breading. We're going to sprinkle it in there. Now, making gravy, it's hard to give a recipe because it's kind of like you got to stir it around, see how much liquid you need. You know, you kind of want the same amount of fat to the flour. Got my gravy whisk. And we're just going to stir it and make a paste. Can you see that? And it soaks all of that up. Mm, I'm going to put a tad more oil. Might have put a little too much flour, but you know what? It's just cooking. That's okay. Oh, yeah. that Just that little bit did it. That was like a teaspoon more of oil. That's all it needed. And all those bits in that oil from frying has already turned the flour brown. But you want to cook it for a minute or two because you want to cook you want to cook that raw flour taste out because if you don't it's going to taste like flour and it's not going to be good gravy. So mm, I can't wait to eat this. Yeah. Oh it's going to be so good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some brown gravy powder. And I'm just going to put a little bit in there just to give it some extra flavor. But that's not all I'm going to use. Looky there. Uh, about two tablespoons. That's all I'm going to use. And let's stir that around. And you see that's just continuing to brown and that's what we want is brown gravy all right now that's going to come together we're going to add beef broth but i'm not done there uh, yeah i don't know how much it's going to take we'll start with a couple of cups that's about four cups in this container, and I use probably just a little over two cups. I'm going to bring that together. I'm fixing to add something that might surprise you, and it might not. I'm going to add a splash of balsamic vinegar. It gives it a deep, rich flavor. Not much, it don't take much, but it deepens the flavor of the gravy. And uh, I don't know what it does to it, but it just makes it taste so much better. And this gravy is getting thicker 
I might have to get a spoon and try it before. I'm gonna add some more liquid because I want it thinned out a little more. Okay, I'm gonna slip these back in there. You can see it, they shrunk just a little bit during cooking, but that's what happens. Slide those onions back in there. Let's stir this around a little bit. Let's turn this heat down and just let it slowly, low and slow. So I'm gonna let this simmer. I'm gonna put a lid on it and I'll turn it as low as I can get it. And I'll be back in just a few minutes and we're gonna get some potato patties made, okay? All right, so let's get started with our potatoes. I've got um, maybe a cup and a half, a cup and a quarter of mashed potatoes left over from supper a couple of nights ago. So I don't want to throw them away. They were too good. Groceries are too expensive now to throw away. I'm going to put one egg. Now, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to dice up a little bit of onion. See, I only used half of my onion earlier because um, it was, you know, kind of big and I didn't need it all. So I'm just going to put a small amount of onion in these potatoes. I'm dicing it up, not real big, but on the smaller side, not immense. You don't want it too small. But um, you want to know you got some ooh, some in there, but um, you don't want it to cook cook out either. So that that's not even a quarter of a cup. So we're gonna stir that in there, mix it around with these e with this egg. Can you see what I've done? And we're gonna mix it around with this egg. And then we're gonna put a little flour in it, just as a binder. The egg will bind it together as well. But we're, we want just a tiny bit of flour, not a lot because you don't want it bread. You want to know you're eating potatoes and not bread. I am gonna put a little extra salt, even though I, I salted them when I cooked them. And uh, they're going to be wonderful. I got my oil heating. And they soften up when you put that egg in there and you get stirring it around. The leftover mashed potatoes are the key to making potato patties. I need a little flour. They, for some reason, I have found with my years of cooking, and that's been a lot of years, that fresh made mashed potatoes don't do as well. You need them cold and left over and for them to really stick and hold together. I've tried them the other way with making it fresh, and it just didn't, didn't work as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to get that oil. And I am using an ice cream scoop. That's what I like to scoop them out with. I've got the big one. For like ice cream, you can use a medium-sized one, however you want to do it. Or you can spoon them out. It doesn't have to be uh, a scoop. I just like to. It helps me keep them about the same size. Can you see that little piece in that oil sizzling? My oil is hot enough. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. So I'm going to level it off. Put it in there. Now when I, I'm going to press it down just a little bit. And when I get ready to turn them, I'll, I'll press them a little bit more. I don't want them too flat. Get her dish. It doesn't take long to cook them. Remember, your potatoes are already cooked, and all you're doing is really browning it, getting them hot again. So, 
If you go to move them, they don't want to move. Just wait. It will let you know. And it gets good and browned. And we're going to flip it over. And when they're good and brown on both sides, then we're going to take them up. And um, we're going to have us a fine, fine supper. All right, I'm ready to turn over the potato patties. I don't know that you can see the bottom side of that. Can you see how brown that is? I think you can see it. Let's turn these all over. Now, the second side is going to cook a lot quicker than the first. It always does. And I want to put the, some okra in there. Noisy. And um, we'll get it back on the heat. See, they're just little small pies. And uh, I think the smaller is going to be better. They're frozen, so they want to stick together sometime. They won't eat but a few. Look at those little ones. They're frozen, but you know, it won't take them but a minute to defrost in this heat. Let's throw another one in there and um, get it back on the stove. Can you see them in there? See them floating around in there? And we're going to get them back on the heat. Get them covered up. And let them finish cooking. And get that okra cooked for him. So he'll really enjoy that. I've got a couple of these that are ready to come up. I want to show you. Can you see that? You can see that other side? That's what you want. You want to get it good and brown like that. Let's get the little baby one out. This one's ready to come up. Now, I'll heat these back up when he gets home and ready to eat. And these have got to cook around just a couple of more minutes. They're not ready yet. And, um... Maybe they weren't on the heat just right. So I'm gonna let these finish, get them browned, I'm gonna take them up, and we'll start on something else. All right, let's make some cornbread to go with this beautiful meal of cubed steak and gravy, purple whole peas with okra, and potato patties. So let's get started. I've got my skillet in the oven preheating to, or it, it has just preheated to 435. My daughter-in-law's grandmother told her that 435 was the perfect temperature to put cornbread on, and that's what she did, and that's what my daughter-in-law did, and she told me about it, and I said, well, let me try, and she's absolutely right. 435 is the perfect temperature so i am using self rising flour white lily buttermilk cornmeal mix it's got baking powder baking soda it does have some salt uh, flour in it but i would like to put just a tiny bit of flour in mine and i've got just about a cup of cornmeal and i probably put a couple of tablespoons of self rising flour I am going to add some salt, because I think it needs it, one egg, and I didn't have any buttermilk, and I'm sure a lot of you know this trick. I used whole milk and put some vinegar in it. Now, you can do it with lemon juice, but I like to do the vinegar a lot better, so I am not good for drinking. I don't like to drink buttermilk. I'd like to cook with it, but um, it is wonderful to cook with when you're cooking and realize you don't have buttermilk. So that's about three quarters of a cup of milk. Yeah, I did pretty good there, didn't I? Measuring. So we're going to stir that up, see if we need any more. I fixed the cup, but I don't always need it. 
I don't really use measurements when I'm making cornbread. I just kind of dump and stir and eyeball it. I do have a recipe, but it makes a big pan of cornbread and I'm not making a big pan, I'm making a small pan. So I've got oil, just vegetable oil, canola oil, and I'm gonna put a little bit in here. Now what that does, it makes and keeps the cornbread moist. So there's nothing worse than dry, crumbly cornbread when you're eating. You want moist. And get some good old butter on it. Oh my goodness. So let's get this pan, this skillet out of the oven. It is gonna be screaming hot. Which is what you want. And I'm gonna keep, I keep my pot holder on the handle so I don't accidentally touch it and get burned. Maybe I'm gonna fold around. So I'm gonna just put just a tiny, tiny bit of oil in the bottom of that skillet. Now I'm gonna put a smidge, a smidge of butter and it should melt almost immediately. Yep. Can you hear that? You know that pan's hot. Let's put that in there. Well, it's taking a minute to do this. Gives my cornbread mixture a minute to sit there. Um, it kind of rises a little bit, and then when you go to stir it, it stirs it back down. Sometimes I let it sit longer than that. Okay, the butter is all melted. Listen, when I pour this in, it should sizzle. Well, I, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is. You can see it around the sides. I'm gonna hold it up and let you look at it. See around the edges there where it's already starting. Now, let's put this in the oven. We're gonna bake it. Oh, about 20 minutes. And um, then we're going to take it out. And as soon as I take it out of the oven, I flip it right out of the pan because I don't want it sitting there um, just sitting in that hot pan and it just kind of stings it up and it gets soft. I want it good and crunchy. So let me get this going and I'll be back in a little while. All right, stay with me. All right, the timer just went off on our cornbread, and I'm fixing to take it out of the oven, and we're gonna pull this meal together. So, let's check it out. Oh, oh, that looks so good. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it out on this plate and let you see it. See how it looks in the pan? See that golden brown? That's what you want. It cooked about 25 minutes. Now looky there. I know that's the bottom. Some people serve it as the bottom. I like to serve it as the top. So, let's do that. Let's slice up. I've got a tomato and a cucumber. And I'm going to slice those up. Let me rinse it off real quick. We're going to slice it up. Slice up our cucumber. I'm the only one that will eat the cucumber. He might eat a bite. If you don't have one of these tomato knives by Rada, that's the best thing you can get to slice your tomatoes with. My mother had one when we were growing up and she used it all the time for stuff like this. You can get under that skin. You don't have to peel your tomatoes. We like to peel them. And um, it's just something I've always done. So we're gonna slice it and put it on this plate. And we'll cut up that cucumber. And I've got some green onions that we're gonna put around. And we're gonna do good, okay? So let's get this cucumber sliced up. I'm gonna peel it a little bit. I, I do like to take the peel off the cucumbers. I'm gonna slice it down and slice it down again and just have little wedges. I'm 
be smart and put it on the table. And see, looky there, how pretty to go with. And I've got some green onions that I had in the refrigerator and left over. And they're already cut up, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a few of those to the side. We'll get out what we want. And um, we might even sprinkle a few on top of our potato patties. We'll see if we're gonna have um, gravy on them. Looky there. Set that aside. Now, let's get rid of this. <clears throat> Let's get these beans over here so you can see them. We're going to serve it right here on this cutting board. And I'll serve him right there. Looky there. It's home style, so I'm going to serve it straight out of the pan. It's just me and him. That's what we like to do. Look at him, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it. This is the cute stuff. Let's get a spoon that we can lift it up and let you see it. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm gonna hold it like that. Can you see that? Oh, my word. Let me get one out and hold it up for you. See that steak? Oh, and it's gonna be so tender. I can tell already just by touching it, it's wanting to fall apart. So, I'm gonna get this, pull it together, and get his plate made as soon as he gets in. He's on his way, he'll be here in just a minute. And get him fed. Let's don't forget the peach cr crisp that we made. And uh, that'll be his dessert. He loves peach cobbler, so I'm sure he's going to like that. But thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll cook some of my recipes. Go check out my other recipes on YouTube, Karen Jones Food and Family, and I would appreciate it if you would like my page, my channel, subscribe, and share it, okay? It just helps me get my videos out for everybody to see. I certainly do appreciate it. Thanks for joining me today.